Well, hello and welcome back to another Primetime Devo. My name is Dwayne Matz. We're continuing in the book of 2 Timothy. We're in chapter 1. Today, going to look at verse 12 as Paul is writing to Timothy and he says, For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. That's Second Timothy 1.12. Paul, who was appointed by God to serve as a preacher, apostle, and teacher to the Gentiles, knew going in that he would suffer persecution and trial because of this appointment. Ananias was told to relay that information to Paul shortly after his conversion, and we read about it in Acts 9 beginning at verse 15. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel, meaning Paul, of mine, to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Sitting in a dungeon, waiting for your execution by the state, being counted as a criminal, certainly could bring on feelings of shame and doubt. Would you want to be associated with such a person? Would you want to be associated with a faith that is deemed worthy of such a cruel death? There would be no public outcry to save Paul. In fact, as he writes this letter, all but Luke have abandoned him. Paul had the option to renounce his faith at any time and be spared this shameful, painful death, but he didn't. One can't help but think of Jesus also suffering a shameful death at the hands of the state as he hung without mercy on a cross between two common thugs. What a shameful death. There was no public outcry. He was abandoned, just a few concerned friends and his mother at the foot of the cross to watch him suffer and die. In fact, the public cried out, crucify him. He's a fraud, a phony. Matthew 27, 42 says, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he's the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we will believe him. Yeah. Where's your Jesus now, Paul? Now let me ask you point blank. Where's your Jesus now in your time of trial? Where will Jesus be in your coming tribulations? And the answer that Paul gives is the same that you and I need to remember. I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Paul was intimately familiar with Jesus. And he believed that Jesus had the power to keep his faith intact. And that's really all that matters until that day that the gates of paradise would be opened to him. Paul knew that his agonies now are temporary. And in persevering in the faith, no matter the perceived shame of it, would result in eternal bliss. May God give us the same convictions as we suffer while we travel this sod on our way to our eternal home. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you much for listening. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you. Tell your face about it.